In the hope of inspiring the next generation, and at least giving hope for the next generation, the pet lovers at Sheba have shown the way forward in the development of a coral reef to help save vital ocean life. Wait till you hear this. Named for the people of Earth, Hope Reef, the start of the world's largest coral reef restoration programme, has been revealed off the coast of Sulawesi. The reef, which can be seen on Google Earth, has been built to spell out the word hope, and it's a symbol to show the world how positive change can happen within our lifetimes. Scientists estimate that if the world does nothing, 90% of the world's tropical reefs will be gone by 2043, and this would impact 500 million people who depend on them for food, income and coastal protections. The effort to solve this requires a global cooperation on a massive scale and Sheba hopes to play the role of catalyst, helping to ensure the future has coral reefs and fish. Restoration on the Hope Reef began two years ago and since then, coral cover has increased from 5 to 55%. And this means fish abundance has increased and we have seen the return of species such as sharks and turtles. By the end of 2029, Sheba's ambition is to restore more than 185,000 square metres of coral reef at sites around the world, roughly the size of 148 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Viewers who watch the Sheba Hope Reef story, the film that grows coral on YouTube, will help raise money for the reef restoration. And with every view, the advertising money generated is invested into coral reef restoration through a campaign partner, the Nature Conservancy. And it's thought that this is the first ever time that 100% of funds from a YouTube channel have been monetized for sustainability efforts. Providing a simple but effective solution, Hope Reef uses innovative reef star technology, 90cm wide star-shaped steel structures that are handmade by the local community in Indonesia. Each star is joined underwater to create a strong web that covers the seabed and provides a stable base for coral fragments to regrow. Professor Dave Smith, the Chief Marine Specialist at the Mars Company said, We are thrilled to unveil Hope Reef and show that there really is hope for our oceans. Our efforts around the world is to restore and regenerate these precious ecosystems and showing exciting results and having a positive impact on local communities which we are delighted to see. We hope our efforts inspire others to join us so we can all play a part in helping to prevent the extinction of our coral reefs. Dr Elizabeth MacLeod, the Nature Conservancy's Global Reef Systems leader says, Coral reefs are at the heart of our oceans, supporting over a quarter of marine life. And these reefs also supply millions of people worldwide with food, livelihoods, life-saving medicines and protection against storms. It's imperative that we scale up our work to protect and restore the long-term health of these vital ecosystems, as well as addressing the threats that have caused their decline and building their resilience to a changing climate. Since 2008, Sheba's parent company Mars, one of the richest families in the world and part of a shallow global elite who harbour most of our civilization's wealth, so with their unlimited amounts of cash reserves, they have invested a tiny fraction of their wealth, about $10 million in research, restoration and community engagement as part of this coral reef programme. In addition to this, the company has also invested $1 billion to help drive action for the protection and restoration of the planet and those who inhabit it through its sustainable inner generation plan. Tracy Massey, global president of Mars Pet Nutrition said, This is a symbol of hope. Hope for the future of our oceans and the start of a movement to restore these vital ecosystems. The Nature Conservancy and our other long-standing partners on coral restoration around the world ensure a promising start to help drive further action, acting as a catalyst to inspire others to help create a healthy, thriving planet for both people and pets. Also, the Ningaloo coast is famed for its idyllic beaches and diverse wildlife, but that's not all what it has to offer. According to a group of scientists, this area is a prime location for research into human life up to 60,000 years ago. Archaeologists from the University of Western Australia this week completed a seven-week dig, the first in a series of excavations planned for the Nyingulu archaeological project, which is expected to span for several years. One of the archaeologists, Peter Veth, said the area around the northwest cape 
was uniquely set to offer valuable insight into the past. Professor Veth said, Of the whole coast of Australia, this shelf is the steepest and that makes it an ideal sampling point to record tens of thousands of years of marine resource use, the local ecologies and the human habitation pattern. And you can't do this anywhere else in Australia to nearly the same effect. With the last project of this kind being conducted over 30 years ago, Professor Veth said radiocarbon dating techniques from that era place artefacts to 40 or 50,000 years old. But today, with new technology, this could prove people were living in this region even earlier than that. Saying that an age range of 40 to 50,000 years, the ages often read too young. But Professor Veth was confident his team could reanalyse old finds and date new ones up to 60,000 years. He said that we've got the methodology and techniques now to push the date back as far as 70,000 years. According to Professor Veth, the extra 10 to 20,000 years would highlight just how long indigenous people have been living, not just in North West Cape, but across the whole continent. He said that the current study would provide insight into how people migrated across the land, how they traded in sophisticated economies, and how they survived major climate changes and shifting sea levels. The very first Australians had much, much more complex maritime and desert adaptive systems than we previously thought. The project highlights the importance of working with traditional owners in the region and a new generation of work with traditional owners with the Joint Management Board of Ningaloo it's likely to provide some extraordinary new narratives and to build upon the old ones. The Nyingaloo Archaeological Project has already turned up some very significant finds like the remains of a thylacine which are now extinct. And the researchers say that this dig is just the beginning Professor Veth says, This is literally the beginning of what I hope will be a new phase of documentation and research to profile the culture's value of the World Heritage Area, which are clearly very significant. But what do you guys think about this one today anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.